Welcome to another season of HODA's Career Info, the program where career professionals from across the globe meet to empower you to succeed. This program is brought to you by Right Career Fit. Listen and learn, and remember to have that very important career conversation with a career professional. LinkedIn is no longer an, an option. It's uh, it's essential. It's it's needed for just job seekers today. If you can affect one life or one person on LinkedIn, then um, that makes it an even better place to be. LinkedIn takes time because it's a journey and not a destination. the key component of LinkedIn success and even life success is trust. When you build your community, you will never feel lonely on LinkedIn. Thank you for joining Hoda's Career Info, your career program where guests from across the globe share career tips and personal stories to help you successfully navigate your career. I am Hoda, your host. I look forward to another season of Career Chats with international professionals who will inspire you to take your journey to the next level. Today's guest is Shelley Elsliger. Shelley is a certified coach and among the most respected career coaches and LinkedIn trainers in Canada. Shelley has a significant amount of experience working with two top-tier business schools. Concordia, and University of Toronto. She is known for her personalized and individualized approach to help clients understand and successfully articulate their value, skills, and potential. Shelley is certified in leadership and inclusion, driven to create a foundation and culture where all people feel accepted, valued, and worthy. She is also on the list of globally recognized LinkedIn trainers and known for creating LinkedIn aha moments and encouraging diverse professionals to master the art of social reciprocity and the flow of social engagement in order to build relationships and community. She is a member of the International Coach Federation, the ICF. She's recognized as a woman you need to know by the National Women Speakers Association, a woman of achievement, a Forbes and Thrive Global Writer, Woman of Inspiration winner 2019, and a trusted speaker for LinkedIn Canada. Shelley's also an author, animal lover, and firewalker. Let's listen and together learn from Shelley's expertise. LinkedIn Wonder Woman and kindness advocate Shelley Elsweger. Very proud to have you on Hoda's Kitty Info. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's really nice to be here. Definitely very exciting for me. And right away, I want to talk about you, why I called you Kindness Advocate. Mm -hmm. uh, you started a LinkedIn group. The name of the group is Decide to Be Kind. And you have the hashtags Decide to Be Kind and Kind Club trending. And I'm very proud of you. I'm very excited to be part of the club and yeah. proudly wear the bracelet. Um, that promotes this club. What would you like to tell the audience about this LinkedIn group, I Decide to Be Kind, and uh, why is it important from your perspective to be kind? It's kind of a club and a, and, and a group all mixed in one because it's made up of Kind Club members. And so I started the group almost three years ago. It'll be three years, ago, three years in January, 2023. And um, I think how it all came about is because I started to notice some people leaving the platform, not engaging as much, just not as present as they normally were. And I had been doing this series called the Change Maker series for a number of months. So every month I would put a number of change makers, all diverse change makers um, who influenced me on the platform. Um, and I was doing that for about three years. And I started to notice that some of the people that I recognized as change makers were no longer being active on the platform. And it really bothered me. 
And so I decided to be kind of a CSI agent, a LinkedIn CSI agent, because I always wanted to be a CSI agent. Now that I'm, you know, I'm speaking to a career specialist, but I, um, I, I kind of started to reach out through DMs and sometimes I had their phone number and just jumping on a, a Zoom call. And, and I found out that many of them had been bullied, um, some to the extreme, some just to the point of, I don't know, just uncomfortableness for that person and not wanting that person, and then that person not wanting to, to be so visible on LinkedIn anymore to share content. And it really like bothered me because I, you know, these were people that I, that influenced me positively on the platform. And so I started to um, take a look at their stories and started to do some investigation for a year, I did that. So I reached out to people. I looked at the back LinkedIn, back LinkedIn stories. And in fact, one of the things that I realized is that uh, blocking, the blocking feature of LinkedIn came out way later than when LinkedIn actually came about. And that was because of a harassment issue. And, and the woman who was being harassed on LinkedIn won her case. And the blocking feature came as a result of, of her case being won. And I thought that that was really interesting because a lot of people don't see LinkedIn as that place for bullying. We're all supposed to be professionals. We're building community. We're there to share our expertise. But in fact, um, it can be a perfect place for people who... Um, don't want to deal with their emotions in an outward way. And especially when it comes to workplace bullying. So people who are jealous of somebody else's, I don't know, pr promotion, acknowledgement. And, and so LinkedIn can be the perfect place for that because you're outing somebody in a public place and there's not really too many places you can run and hide, right? So <clears throat> that really bothered me that... Um, people were feeling like that. And um, yeah, so it, um, I decided that I could play a small part in changing LinkedIn for the better. And so I decided to um, <coughs> get these bracelets, the decide to be kind bracelets. And this would just be a symbol um, that people could wear and it would unite us in making sure that LinkedIn remained a safe, positive, inclusive place to be because LinkedIn is no longer an, an option. It's, uh, it's essential. It's, it's needed for just job seekers today. It's, it's I mean, an employer and a, or a recruiter is, you have to be on LinkedIn. It's a, <laughs> they just expect it. And so I didn't want, I, you know, I also spent quite, quite a big, um, a great deal of time in post-secondary. So I didn't want the, the you know, post-secondary students who are just starting out and looking forward to their careers, being afraid or being bullied and not knowing what to do. So I wanted them to show them the good side of LinkedIn in a, in a very physical way, like a tangible way. And so that's how it all came about. There were a variety of different reasons. So formed the Kind Club and got it out there. And, um, and yeah, it, it just really, really took off. And this was like, just before COVID, like, the year before COVID really hit in. And so um, a lot of people ordered wristbands and a lot of people were posting and videos and, and we really got the word out. And um, I, you know, from that moment on that, that this, for, this group formed, I mean, it grew steadily, just people wanting to be seen in a positive light and wanting LinkedIn to be seen in a positive light because a lot of us are, are trainers or we use LinkedIn in our daily lives to influence people in a positive way. So um, you don't have to have a wristband to be in the Kind Club. There's a group on uh, LinkedIn called uh, um, uh, Decide to be Kind. And it's open to anybody who really wants to make um, an attempt and, and try to show through example and role modeling that LinkedIn is should remain and stay a positive and diverse and inclusive place to be so that people can have it to help 
so that LinkedIn can help them reach whatever goals that it, whatever goal that is that they're on LinkedIn for. Yeah. And that is a very, uh, very, very good message and very important. And uh, so the bracelet is definitely a conversation piece, right? People will ask you why you're wearing it. And it just reminds us all to be kind and, you know, nice to others because sometimes we get carried in our own things. So all, what do people have to do to join? Just go to the group and click join or? Yeah, sure. Like, I mean, go to the, to the group to join. Um, it's not an automatic entry into uh, LinkedIn. There's kind of like we, I, you know, there's a bit of vetting around your profile, your activity, the content that you're um, that you're sharing, um, because it really is a place made up of of people who really make LinkedIn a, a part of their their everyday lives and really on there to commit to making a difference and using LinkedIn as a tool. Um, to spread awareness and positivity and um, along with like sharing the content that you want to share. If you're an expert in something, obviously it's a great place to share um, that content and, uh, and you know, to um, make sure that you're seen as an expert in your field. But there's also always a way to showcase who you are and to role model how you want to be. And if you can affect one life or one person on LinkedIn, then um, that makes it an even better place to be. So uh, yeah, we vet it a little bit just to take a look and then you're accepted into, uh, into the group and you can get to know other people in the group. And it's a great place just to, to, to get to meet people who are wanting the same thing as you. And um, you know, we're a small group comparatively, but a mighty group. So we can make things happen if we want them to. Absolutely. And I met, uh, like, I got new connections through the club as well. So I definitely recommend being a part of it. Um, Shelly, you are an influencer. And uh, regularly, you share your personal stories or tidbits from your personal story that when I read them, I get goosebumps, I get teary eyed. Uh, but there's always a message behind the uh, posts on LinkedIn that you post. Um, can you share with the audience today a little bit of your personal story and embed it with a message that you would like to send to people listening? So I'm a LinkedIn trainer. Of course, I always help people to, you know, to build their profile and tell their story and, um, you know, own their space on LinkedIn. But LinkedIn is much um, more of a deeper thing for me. Um, I guess it's my social media tool of choice because it's a, um, a professional site and because, you know, we get to influence people to a wider degree and in a more professional way on LinkedIn. So it's very, it, you know, my time on LinkedIn is, is very deeply rooted and um, it also comes from an experience that I had that I share with a lot of people. Um, I shared, I didn't share this story for a long time, but then when I became an adult and quite aware of how that actual adverse time in my life turned out to be something positive, then I started to share. Um, and I was really, um, really humbled by how much it, um, it affected people. So I do talk about it a lot more. So when I was an early teen, you know, I was this gregarious kid anyway. I loved to be on stage. I think I wrote my first poem and recited it on stage when I was like in grade three or four. So I always loved to be on stage. I just, um, I don't know, it was just something that was natural for me. Um, in grade six, um, they had um, a special event at my school and I grew up like in Northern New Brunswick, uh, you know, so this was a big deal. And everybody came out to see and we, were, we had our public speaking and our little notes and I was actually going to speak on empathy and um and so I got ready to do it and found, I, I knew where my little like there's a piece of tape on stage where you have to go and stand on stage and um so my time was coming there were a group of us I think there were 11 that were presenting that day and I was getting nervous and um when it came time for me to get up I was 
pretty confident. In fact, I told my my speech my speech uh, advisor, I don't need the cards. I don't want the cards. And she's there. Take the cards. Just take the cards. They'll help you. They're like support system. Just take them. You don't have to use them, but take them. So I remember having my cards there, but really not wanting to use them. So I got up there and I start, I, I was just about to, um, you know, say my speech and I noticed um, my bully. So I had a bully in, um, you know, later elementary school into junior high school. And I saw her and I, um, right away, I got this lump in my throat, but decided to proceed because I was there to, to do my thing. But just as I was about to, um, she, in front of everybody, just yelled out some, you know, pretty negative comments and uh, name calling. And I remember just my cards fell to the floor and I just was trying to go through the curtains. And you know how it's so hard to find that opening in the curtains. So in my attempt to do that, I just wanted to run away. I had these this pair of red high heels, my first high heels. That was the only thing I asked for. And in my attempt to get out through the curtains, because I was embarrassed, because I was so sad, and um, one of my heels just got caught up in the emotion and flew off. And I don't oh, even know where no. it ended up to this day. Oh, so yeah. I went with one heel and I went out the back and I ran home because I lived a half a kilometer from, from the school. And I just walked in the door and I said, I'm never going to wear high heels again. And I'm never going to speak in public again. And I didn't for many, many years. Um, but there was all, always something that taunted me and, and always something that said, you're not doing what you set out to do. This is not who you are. You're living this kind of like fake existence. But I couldn't come above it for many, many years because it, it bothered me and it took a piece away from me that day. It took something away from me, something very important to me. And so, um, but many, many years later, I went back home. I had already moved on a couple of different provinces and moved on. And, and then one day I went back and the other heel that didn't get caught in the crossfire, my mother had kept it. And she said, I kept this because I know someday you're going to, to use it and you're going to use it in a way that's going to help you get through all of that stuff that happened to you as a kid. And so I took the heel, <laughs> came back. And um, when I, so a few years later, when I got into LinkedIn and I was using LinkedIn to help post-secondary students, one day I got, I, I won um, a ticket to a conference and I got to this conference and LinkedIn had a table. So I was really happy. And I hung out at that table. And while I was at the table, um, there was a break at some point, but they knew me well because they couldn't help that I was there the entire time. <laughs> you know, I'd go to a, uh, I'd go to somebody speak, and then I'd walk over and go to the LinkedIn booth. And um, so anyway, we ended up at a coffee shop together, and I decided this is my moment to step out. This is the moment my mother talked about, and um, the person ahead of me who had this red jacket with blue letters LinkedIn, and I could never understand that, but. I thought the red jacket should be blue. But anyway, I said, he, um, he ordered a latte and I paid for it. So I, I paid the latte for him. And then I said, and then I walked over and he said, wow, thank you very much. He goes, it's not like, <laughs> I, I don't know you. <laughs> and he said, uh, you want to sit down? And, and I said, I would love to have a LinkedIn latte with you. And uh, from that time, the, the name stuck. And we sat there, I believe it was like for two hours. And, um, you know, at that point, I just said everything I wanted to do. I wanted to do a LinkedIn and high heels for women business leader leaders. I wanted to use the tool as a way to build confidence. I wanted to use the tool as a storytelling um, a tool. Uh, and I just had all of these ideas. And, you know, after I didn't really expect anything, I just knew it was just my time to put it out all to put it all out there and then accept whatever came my way. And he and basically at the end of everything, at the end of the conference, 
not only was I introduced to some representatives at, at LinkedIn, I went to visit LinkedIn. I, I built kind of a community there. I ended up being an ambassador and, and just everything came my way. And I really take that entire um, opportunity and I look at it from the light of that little girl that was standing on that stage that day because I just had to turn that adverse time around and make it work for me. And since that moment of paying the LinkedIn latte forward, that's how the decide to be kind, um, you know, movement came. Because normally when I send a, a, a wristband, I send one to pay forward. I'm always telling people to invite other people to the group. It's all about building community and doing things for other people. And that's because when I was let down, once when I was a kid, once I allowed myself to open up and be vulnerable again, be authentic again, um, I had people around me to support me and to actually give me opportunities that I would that I never ever expected to have. And so, you know, everything that I do on the platform actually always translates back to to that moment. So in a way, I'm I'm grateful now that it happened because, you know, it's not about telling people that we're going to solve the problem of bullying, not on LinkedIn, not in life. But it is about telling people you can have a sheet of armor and understand what that means. That, that armor is there to protect you. And then learning the tools that you need to protect yourself and then rising above it when opportunities come and you don't let that stand in your way. Because that's just fear. That's just a fear and we can all overcome fear. I really appreciate your willingness to share your story, Shelley. Uh, it's definitely embedded with a lot of messages, uh, even one as simple as not letting go of your dream of the skills that you think are important to you. But more importantly, that part of being, uh, you know, paying it forward and how that could help you get to where you'd like to get. Uh, I really appreciate your, your willingness to share. Well, um, thank you for allowing me to, to share it. Shelly, you are uh, also known as a LinkedIn Wonder Woman. <laughs> and, and you just shared some of the experience of how you got involved with LinkedIn. Um, I usually ask the guests, I challenge them to speak a term that they think reflect their services or the work they do and to define it from their perspective. Uh, what is your word, Shelly? So my words are social reciprocity. So everything that I do in LinkedIn and even in life, I take it from, um, you know, I take it from a baseline of social reciprocity. Um, a lot of people jump on LinkedIn and they want instantaneous results, you know, whether it's trying to find a job, whether it's to build community. Um, LinkedIn takes time because it's a journey and not a destination. And I really, truly believe that the key component of LinkedIn success and even life success is trust. So um, I'm on there to build community. I'm on there to help people. And then as a result of reciprocity, social reciprocity, what's going to happen is this is going to grow. So imagine, you know, if ever if if we always did something from the root of social reciprocity and in the face of trying to make things better and do things and give things and pay good things forward, what would happen to a place like LinkedIn? Um, I, we, we try so hard to build community, but community is not instantaneous. It's a very, community is built in trust and trust takes time. It's earned, it's not, um, it's not given. And so that is definitely the thing that I, that I live by. And when I'm on LinkedIn and when I train people on LinkedIn, I switch it around and often I'll get some feedback. Well, I want to do my profile or I want, <laughs> um, you know, I want to know the algorithm. The algorithm is, is important. And there are key things that I'm always going to talk about so that you can, you can up your game on LinkedIn and definitely the algorithm is one of them. But 
again, if we change the way we approach LinkedIn and we take it from the opportunity of helping people, thinking about what other people need, the kind of support they could um, they could really uh, need at that moment. If we take it from that perspective, what will happen is that it will come back to us. Um, and we may not know when that happens. We just have to believe in the power of social reciprocity. And I'm such a, a big believer because I would never be where I am today um, if I didn't have community that believed in me and supported me along the way. Um, and so that is definitely, uh, definitely my word. And when people work with me, that is kind of, I, it doesn't have to be your thing, but it certainly has to be something that I, that I introduce almost immediately because I really feel it will change your experience on LinkedIn. It will change how you navigate the profile. It will change how you show up on LinkedIn and will show how much you enjoy LinkedIn <laughs> because if you're not enjoying it, that it can be a real time waster and, um, and it can take away from all of the good things that you have to offer. So if you position yourself well and you're going there with the right, you're going on LinkedIn with the right intentions, it can actually be such an amazing, an amazing place to be. I love this term and uh, it is so important. And uh, the idea also like such an important concept because a lot of people would reach out to you, I'm sure, and to me where they just want to, you know, sell me something or, right? Yes, and yes. so this this definitely highlights like established trust and then I might be, you know, able to either buy from you or actually help you by getting you clients. So thank you for highlighting that. I love it. Yes, and it's, I'm glad you brought that up because one way to dissolve trust before it even gets started is to sell and especially sell things that you don't know I'd be interested in because time is so precious that um, we we're not on LinkedIn to waste our time. We're on LinkedIn to, to really um, embrace the time that we have on there. So yeah, if you really want to oh, really want to get into that abundance stance on LinkedIn, um, earn the trust first. And then if you see that there's some synergy there, then by all means, that might be a great way for you to introduce your business or your product services. Uh, might have more of a chance at that point. <laughs> That's a very good point. Um, Shelly, you're also a multitasker. When I think of you, I've got this list of descriptions of you. And multitasker is definitely one of them. And you always have so many projects going on. Um, what kind of advice would you give to other multitaskers like you who are today looking for work? Yes, I'm definitely a multitasker. I have my hands in so many pots. Sometimes I think I have to close a few lids. But um, uh, what I do to multitask is, is I really dedicate certain times, like throughout my week, I'm a really good planner. So what that means is that I make time, like I prioritize things really well. And I do things in terms of prioritization, but I also do things in terms of carving out important things throughout my day. Like, for example, LinkedIn, it's a pretty busy time, so I may not be on there as much. So maybe I'm going to be on there 15 minutes and I'm going to dedicate one day to really re uh, reaching out and supporting my network that day. Maybe the second day I've thought about an article and maybe I've been, you know, over uh, the, the last week kind of thinking about that article that I'm going to write. Maybe once, um, maybe the next day, I'm going to just go on and I'm going to, to write a post. Um, and I'm going to go through the guidelines and I'm going to make sure I have a nice visual and I'm going to make sure maybe even a video, something that's going to, um, you know, help me with the algorithm, but also I think make an emotional connection with, with my audience. Um, so I think about the whole curve space and the prioritization space. So, you know, I have a calendar. I have no other choice but to to kind of fill it in um, and work accordingly. Uh, but one thing I will say is something like LinkedIn, which is my my tool of choice, my social media tool of choice, 
I carve in some time every day. Some days I don't have as much time and some days I have a little bit more time. But I carve a little bit of space sometime throughout my day. And that's because it is my social media tool of choice. Whereas maybe Facebook, if I'm not using it, I don't use Facebook for my business. It's more of a social uh, thing with family and friends. So if I'm delayed a few days on Facebook, it's okay. My family will still be there. Um, and so that's how I try to do it. I try to see what are my main goal, the main tools that I need to use, utilize to help me reach my goals and successfully reach my goals, for example, that day, that week, that month, and then really put them out on a calendar, but carve out some time for the things that are important. Um, and it doesn't matter the length of time. It just matters if you show up and do something and be active in some way. Um, we all have a bit of time in that day to carve out little little slots where we can put in and just make sure that we're showing up. So we, because the thing about LinkedIn is that you, it's easy to be forgotten, right? And I, and I don't say that in a, a mean way at all because we're all very special, but LinkedIn is huge. You know, we're talking about over 830 million people. And so at any given time, you look at your news feed and it's constant and constant. It doesn't take long for you to get lost. So if you wrote something two days ago, the chances of it being active two days later are slim. So what I mean by that is that you have to understand the context of LinkedIn and, and what you can do to just make sure that you're, you're showing up. And that might not, you know, maybe you have more time one day and less time the other day, but at least you're, you're continuously keeping your presence alive. And I think that that's a big deal community building on LinkedIn, um, just because of the nature of, of LinkedIn, how big it is, how popular it is, how fast paced it is, um, and how easy it is to, to, that if you're not there, to be forgotten about. But, but that's just par for the course. Uh, I just think carving out that time will allow you to make sure that you're on there so that you don't have to to, to really worry about it. Yeah. And, and this is great advice. I appreciate you sharing it. Thank you. Um, Shelly, we advise, uh, as career professionals, we advise our clients to continually um, professionally develop and take on new challenges. Uh, what is a project or a challenge you're taking on this year? Well, I work a lot in the um, diversity, equity, and inclusion space. And I try to carry that on to um, LinkedIn as well. And what I mean by that is I help organizations, I help um, individuals, uh, departments, um, groups understand what DEI is, why it's important, what cultural transformation includes, and how you can do things to be part of that movement. Um, and sometimes we forget when we are on LinkedIn, that DEI and, and being inclusive on LinkedIn matters. Um, it's part of my Decide to Be Kind campaign, being inclusive. And, um, and so it works really well with the Decide to Be Kind campaign. So it just made sense for me to, to broaden out. So I went back and got certified in um, leadership and inclusion. And I've been working a lot in that field. And it's uh, it's interesting because it makes you think about the kind of content that you are sharing, how you're sharing that content, and how neutral is that content so that everybody can enjoy it. And um, that'll make a difference of um, in terms of where you stand and how and and the kind of leader that you um, that you want to showcase. And when I talk about leader, I don't mean a leadership position. I think we can all be leaders on LinkedIn. It's just, it's our action that actually tells me whether you're an inclusive leader or not. So we have the, we have the choice to be an inclusive leader on, on LinkedIn because there's no more, like diversity is clear on LinkedIn, different cultures, different 
uh, ages, different abilities, different, I mean, it, it's there. So we have the chance to really acknowledge that. And we have a chance to put actions into our, our, our time on LinkedIn that will reflect that and reflect our, our commitment to, um, to DEI practices. Such an important project, particularly with LinkedIn being uh, global, right? And uh, so important. And it goes very well with your decide to be kind. Uh, <laughs> it does. As well. um, so these were all the questions I've had for you, Shelly, today. Was there anything you'd like to wrap up with uh, or share that I didn't ask you about? <laughs> no, just like, I, you know, when it comes to LinkedIn, just enjoy it. Enjoy it. And and just remember that there are a lot of people in there on, on LinkedIn and that it's such a powerful tool and a powerful community. Spend some time building that community because when you build your community, you will never feel lonely on LinkedIn. You will always feel that there's people around you that can offer support, encouragement, advice, and you know maybe some even some expertise into a subject matter that you want to develop and um, understand further. So there's no lack of information that you can that that exists on on LinkedIn. It, there's just it's so abundant and full of knowledge and full of wonderful people that you can meet globally. Just take the time to do it. Um, LinkedIn is 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 not a me thing. It's a we thing. Absolutely. It's where you and I met and then we got to meet and connect with as well. Exactly. I am very, <laughs> I'm very grateful for your time, Shelley, and for your advice. Oh, thank you so much, Hoda, for having me. You've been listening to Hoda's Career Info, the program where career professionals from across the globe join me to empower you to succeed. My guest today on Hoda's Career Info is LinkedIn Wonder Woman and Kindness Advocate, Shelly Elsliger. I hope Shelly's story and the LinkedIn tips she shared empower you to confidently navigate LinkedIn. You can connect with Shelly Elsliger on LinkedIn. Please remember that you can listen to Hoda's Career Info since it's also dropped as a podcast. To let me know if you are interested in an opportunity to talk about your work, you can send me a direct message on my website writecareerfit.com, where you can also sign up for my newsletter to receive more career tips and to stay up to date on the latest episodes. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and follow me on social media for more career info. I am your host, Hoda, and until next time, stay inspired and keep moving forward in constructive ways.